Okay, so we just we just attempted to pay our employees, and that's what you have to do going through the payroll process under here. And we're going to go ahead and pay our employees under the pay employees portion of the payroll center. Now, the next section that we're going to be looking at now is going to be how we actually pay for our liabilities. So again, for having employees, it is, you know, you have to pay taxes on having your employees, okay? And depending on what, uh, depending on, depending on how much you owe and how many employees you have, is going to be, it's going to determine how often you need to pay these liabilities. So what Cook QuickBooks does is if you read this question, if you read it right here, it says that depending on the size of your company, it will tell you whether you are a, um, a monthly or a semi-weekly payer. And what that means is, so every pay period, if it ends on the 15th or, end, or ends on, uh, depending on how it is, like your pay period is every week or every uh, bi-weekly or every semi-monthly, uh, semi usually that will determine how often you need to pay and based on the month. So the month after, on the 15th, you are required to pay all the previous paychecks that previous month before, up to the 15th, okay? So you can pay either, either, either um, one whole paycheck or you might have to pay two depending on the month right because there are some months where you um you might get more than one paycheck so that's usually what that determines semi-weekly is going to be every payroll period you're going to pay either the following wednesday after the pay period has been done or um you do it uh yes or it doesn't have to be wednesday it could be wednesday thursday friday or saturday just depending on when your payroll period is and when you actually distribute your paychecks. So again, these are just quick terminology for you to know, but there are other options for you to pay as well. And again, it's not just based on um, how many employees you have. It's also based on how much liability you owe to the government. So for example, Walmart, they're probably have to pay every other, every other day because they have millions and millions of employee, employees. So that's like number one straight shoot to claim your um, money as soon as you can. And again, and if you don't pay, there are repercussions for that. You will get fined. And this is not a small fine. It's a really hefty fine. So make sure that when, uh, remember when we were doing our payroll setup, we had to set up our taxes. Make sure that those entities are the places that you're going to make payments to and the payments um, for, okay? And we're going to actually take a look at what happens when we set up a, um, a service. So what it allows us to do is not only does it allow us to pay the employees, it also allows us to pay off our liabilities. So it, it directly sends a check to those entities to pay for the liabilities that we owe. So here we're going to go ahead and look at the pay liabilities option. Now, again, um, these should be on your home page. But in, in this case, um, it says it here that the books could be different than what you're actually looking at. So we don't have these icons. Instead, we have we actually have the tabs. So we have it exactly like this picture right here where we have pay liabilities right here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and see how many um, items I need. I actually owe. So I'm going to go ahead and go here. And let's go ahead and look at my liabilities. So I actually owe a quite a few again. So um, okay, again, depending on which entity that you signed up for. So in this, in this case... Um, uh, the status is four weeks, and then some of them are due tomorrow. So again, what you can do is when you look at your calendar, it can pretty much give you details on when 
and reminders that you need to have uh, to pay off your um, liabilities or whatever it is that you're trying to pay off. So in this case, it's telling us we got two of them due tomorrow. And then we have the next batch due in four weeks. So in this case, this is going to be a monthly uh, payment that we need to do every month. But in this case, we owe money tomorrow. So we got two of them to pay off to, for tomorrow. Okay, and let's go ahead and see how we actually have to pay them off. So again, um, we're going to go ahead and select and view the pay button. Um, and we're going to select the first two liabilities, okay? And what we're going to see is um, these payments are supposed to be going to the EFTPS, which is... Um, I don't know what E is, but I know is, uh, fu um, actually, I don't actually know what entity this is. I've never heard of this entity before, um, but they are the one who's going to be collecting the, um, state taxes. Um, if anybody knows what EFTPS is, not that it's relevant because this is for California, um, thank you. Um, so again, yes, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and look at those, um, things that we need to pay. Now, one thing that we learned so far is you never want to use the pay checks option to pay your liabilities. Okay. You only do that if you are actually using a manual payroll system. But if you actually have this set up, I rather have you guys sent it, use the pay your liabilities option um, instead of um, instead of the um, instead of writing the check. But then again, um, when you have these kind of bills come in, you need to enter it as a bill and then you need to pay it properly for you to record it in your books properly if you're doing a manual payroll system okay um but if you're not and you have this payroll um service paid already and you're utilizing it you can just go ahead and select these payroll taxes it's already set up because if you guys remember from the payroll setup from yes from last week we already set them up we already know that these are paid and made out to the ef tps and what we're going to do is we're going to select them and we're going to find the pay button, which I don't see. <sighs> oh, we're going to click pay. Okay, well, we are in pay liabilities. We selected the ones that we want. And... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click view pay. So what's going to happen is I'm going to get this little window and it's going to say, well, what kind of, so you're going to write a check to these people. And yes, um, again, I'm going to make sure it comes out of my checking. I'm going to make sure that the date is correct because we want to make sure that we pay. So it's due tomorrow, correct? And so I'm going to make sure I pay it tomorrow on the 16th, Okay. And then, so his, again, it, the status is to be printed. So um, there is no number to it ass assigned to it. We want to make sure that the um, the person that we're writing the check to is the EFTPS. Okay. And we're paying both. We're paying all the liabilities here for the Medicare, the federal, um, the federal withholdings, as well as the medical, medic, 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 medic. The Medicare, okay? So we want to make sure that all of those are correct. And because we selected both um, things to pay for, okay, um, it's going to it's going to write a check um, all for one location. It's going to write all the checks for the amounts right there, okay? Um, and we want to make sure everything's validated. So 2,538. Let's go ahead and double check that with our book. I'm not quite sure. I think they, 
might have said to pay, um, oh no, perfect, it's exactly what. We are going to pay all of those liabilities for the three items here and we're gonna go ahead and click okay. And um, cause we still gotta put a signature and everything on it. So we're gonna go ahead and validate that and we're gonna go save and close. And just like that, we have our box here that says, you wanna print it now? I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna print it later. Um, and I'm going to say close. Okay. So once you've done that, it's going to eliminate or it's going to eliminate this one since we've already paid the check already. Um, wait, this one has not been selected. All right. I guess we have to pay them separately. Oh, because it's a different entity. So you can only pay one person at a time. Now that one included a lot of things. This one's going to be the California um, withholdings as well as California um, disability insurance. Okay, so this one, um, I guess because it's a different entity, that is exactly why we aren't able to select it. Actually, hold on. Let me cancel this real quick because I have, I selected two of them. Okay, so I want to pay this one. Okay, and I want to go ahead and um, select a view pay and it's a different entity okay so same thing we're going to validate everything and i'm going to change my date to the 16th okay and we need to verify that's going to be for 561 dollars so we're paying 561 dollars to the state um the other one was federal okay i think that's what is it federal federal something treasury i don't know what p means but it should be that. <laughs> All right, save and close. And again, because we selected that our print checks are going to be for later, you're gonna have this window. Do you wanna print a summary or do you want to pick a, a, a detailed report? In this case, I'm not gonna print it now. I'm gonna print, I'm gonna save it for later. So now we have two more liabilities that we are pending for in the next four weeks. Now you can pay them in advance, but you, first off, you don't even know how much you owe. So it's always generally like best to wait till it's almost due for you to go ahead and um, go ahead and um, pay. But these are already automatically estimated saying because we have someone that's salary based. We know that her uh, we know that Katie's paycheck will always stay constant. It will always be 2500 every single paycheck. However, the only one that's going to be different is going to be Mike's. Mike's, he's a, he works hourly and he's a regular worker, right? He can have maximum 80 hours or he might do 60. He, his, his is going to be different. So uh, generally, you do want to wait till the end in order to pay for these liabilities. You can pay in advance, um, but you might get money back you might get money you might have to owe more money it just really depends on how often you pay and if you're paying too short you can actually pay less so that's the great thing so in so for the example right if i were to double click this i get a pay check right i get a pay pay thing right i can pay less than what the amount is asking me for okay i don't have to pay the full two thousand four hundred and eighty something dollars i can go ahead and um click this amount and change and say i only want to pay um one thousand five hundred if i want to do that it's not it's highly recommended you don't do that um just because you know again this is government if you pay short you're going to get charged an additional fee for that for paying less than what you actually owe um so you definitely want to be careful with that, but you can pay less than what you actually owe, okay? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click no. So um, yes, so that is how you go ahead and pay your liabilities. It is quick. It is easy. All you do is just click buttons, confirm it, change the date, make sure that it's for the exact date, and then that's it. That's it for paying liabilities. 
it's already because we filled in all the vendors ahead of time, all the entities. It just took their name. They had all the information and it just, it was easy like that. And we made a pay and we made a paycheck. So if we go ahead and look at our check register, okay, we should have four paychecks pending, right? Because we haven't paid our employees yet and we haven't even, um, and we didn't uh, print out our checks for, um, to pay our liabilities yet. So we should have four things pending. Um, in this case, it looks like... Uh, let me change the date on here because we should actually have a lot more transactions than just those, uh, than just that one transaction right there. Um, huh. Here, let's see, go to payee slash name. Um, hmm. Um, you should have a lot more transactions than just that. Um, Uh, quick report, edit transactions, print, go to. That is weird. Um, but we're supposed to have our other two trends. Okay, so here's one to, oh, wait, never mind. Yeah, that's so weird. We're supposed to have a bunch of paychecks getting ready to be printed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and double check here. If I were to go here and go to... Um, Print forms, and let's go see if we could see all the paychecks. So paychecks, yeah. Here are our two paychecks that we have to pay, that we have to print. Okay, and I'm gonna click cancel, and then let's see, let's see what else do we need to print. So print forms, um, bills or checks. Let's see. Here is our other two checks that we're supposed to pay. So good, they are in the printer. Um, I just don't know why they're not in the check register. I think you were in the savings account one and not the checking account. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you. Uh, we want to go into checking. All right. There you go. So all we have one, two, three, four checks to be ready to be printed. Okay. So again, here it is, all of our transactions we've done so far. Okay, so again, paying liabilities, it's so easy when you're using a payroll system. Everything is so much more easier. Again, if you have to deal with um, calculating it hand by hand. So every employee that you calculate, you need to calculate their separate liabilities, uh, taxes for them as well. And it's going to be um, not the same, but it's a little different because it depends on what you offer your employees, okay? So if you if you offer them a few things, or let's say you need to pay for the Medicare, you know, you need to match them 100% for sure. They're FICA, and you also need to um, match um, if you do workers' compensation, which in this case we do, if you pay for sick pay, anything that you pay for. Or anything that's um, um, that's you're getting taxed for, so any state, uh, federal unemployment tax, state unemployment tax, all that you're gonna have to calculate separately, and every case is different. So um, again, um, luckily in this case we only have two employees, so it's easy to calculate. But for those who are have bigger businesses and that have more than like twenty plus employees you best be having some kind of service to help you get through with the payroll, okay? And again, if you do it manually, you're just gonna enter it in as a bill and you're going to pay it properly through that way, okay? 
you can write a check to that individual into um the EFTPS. You can write just a blank check for I mean, not a blank check, but a check amount. Um, however, you know the best form of doing using QuickBooks for the reason is to be utilizing the icons such as entering a bill and properly and then properly paying them. Okay, because at the end of the day, it's a liability. You want to make sure that you pay your liabilities off. Okay, so yes, yeah, so that is that is the rest of that. The next section I have here is just looking at reports. So other thing that such such as is going to be um, your payroll summary reports. So um, again, um, you're just gonna go up to the top. Um, so you're gonna go to the top. You're gonna go to your reports, and you're going to go into um, employees, um, and pretty much you have a summary on, on your payroll. You have um, summary, you could do, um, you could do it based on items, detail. You could do it based on earnings. You could do uh, taxes. So there's a lot of things that you can do for payroll. And this is just to make sure that it, you know, to make sure that you, you recorded your information accurately as far as the payments that you pay on time and that you're not, you know, you're not, paying them late and getting charged for them. You could do by item. You could do by specific transactions. So all this information, like, again, it's whatever's pertinent for your particular company. I'm not going to look at all of them um, just because there's really no point to do that. So, again, I want to also explore the um, employees menu bar. Okay, so you do have... The employee center here and if you if you purchase the payroll um, service you will see a payroll center okay you do have once you've done that as you can see um, you have the options to pay your employees um, edit your paychecks and stuff so pretty much anything that you see that's in your um, that we've done so far this whole entire time um, you're, you'd be able to do it through the menu bar Okay, and then also the payroll setups here as well. Manager, um, manager payroll um, items, and um, yeah, you can also um, get your payroll service updated. So again, this is also where you can also find your services that uh, that you are able to um, purchase. So. Um, but in this case, we already purchased it, so that you don't have that option on this one. Um, but that's pretty much what you can do under the um, employee's menu bar, okay? Um, other than that, I believe that is it for Chapter 11, okay? We're going to go over the questions now. So again... Um, reports are just going to be based on what you, what works, that what you need for your company. So I'm going to go ahead and skip forward. Okay, oops, I skipped a little too far. Okay, so review questions. Okay. Oh, God, okay, number one is going to be a long one. <laughs> okay, oh. To properly affect the payroll items, okay, um, which of uh, which function, okay, from the employee section of the home page, um, should you use to pay the payroll taxes? Okay, so you have a write a check, b pay bill, c pay employees, or d pay liabilities. This is an easy one. Oh, it is pay liabilities. Okay, so let's explore that again. So let's look at our homepage. So again, because our home page is going to look a little different, um, if you do have the payroll set up, 
you have these options right here. You have pay your liabilities, you have pay your employees, and you also have um, process any um, payroll form. So again, this is when you're when you're doing your um, W-2 forms, you know, setting up the payroll, I mean, set up the taxes for your employee, employee you'd be able to process it here as well, okay? But other than that, if you don't have this, it's a little different on what you can do and you're actually limited to what you can do. But you can still pay your employees and you still can pay your taxes. It's just going to look a little different. All right. Number two. Um, which style checks um, um, when used to processing payroll Um they may contain what? A, the employee, um, sorry, earnings and taxes with, withholdings. B, adjusted um, net pay. Um, C, federal um, filing status, as well as D, all of the above. Okay, so federal fi filing status is going to be your um, how you file as, are you going to file as a single person or are you going to file as a married person? That's the federal filing status. Would it be A? Earnings and tax withholdings. Okay, that is, that is included. Okay, now voucher style, yes, it is all of the above. Voucher style, right, is your pay stub and your paycheck in one, in one piece of paper. So it's, it has to include all of these three, okay? So adjust, adjustments to net pay is going to be any, with, any um, withholdings that you have, any taxes that you've incurred, and your net pay is going to be what you're actually getting paid. Okay, so that's what this is. So yes, all of the above is correct. All right, number three, the payroll liabilities um, balance report um, identifies what? Okay, so we didn't get to look at this, but like I said, um, if you read the book, you should know the answer to this. Is it A, um, liability paid uh, payments um, made during the um, payment period? Or is it B, liabilities amount by um, payroll item? Or is it C, liabilities for employee um, uh, with deductions? Or is it lastly D, um, liabilities for employer taxes? It is B. That is correct. So if you don't know the answer to this, go ahead and read the section. That's the, the last like two pages of reports and find the specific liability balance report and you should be able to get the answer. It's definitely not C because it doesn't have to do with the employee. It's about the employer taxes. All right. Number four, which... um. Which statement is true? Okay, so which one is true? A, you can print pay stubs at any time. B, pay stubs um, print two per page. Um, or C, if you find a, an error um, in a past paycheck, you should delete and recreate a new paycheck. Or D, um, you cannot void a paycheck. Which one's actually true? A, you can print pay stubs anytime. That is true. Yes, you don't, you, you can, again, you can produce them as many times as you want. And the purpose of this is to keep your filing. When you apply for taxes, you need to submit all of your employee pay stubs as well, just so that they can 
you know, do the whole accounting and make sure that, that you calculated everything accurately and that you paid the correct amount of taxes. So that is one purpose why we need to keep, as an employer, you need to keep your pay stubs, okay? And B, pay stubs um, print two uh, per page. Uh, uh, you can if you want to print it on two pages, but is it necessary to print on two pages? Not really, because usually it should be one page. Um, again, you can. It's it's a pretty straightforward summary. Um, there shouldn't be any reason why it's on two pages. Second thing is, if you find an error, you never delete and recreate a new pay stub uh, or a paycheck. Just remember that. Um, and D, you cannot void a paycheck. Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, you can. Lastly, number five, um, to begin processing your payroll, okay? A, select write a check from the home page. B, select the employee's um, menu and then um, select pay um, schedule liabilities. Or um, C, um, select the payroll menu and then select the process payroll. Or is it D, Choose it pay employees from the employee section of the home page. That one's pretty straightforward as well. Okay. Anybody? Would it just be the choose pay employees? Like, are you starting or actually? Processing. So processing is the same thing as paying your um, employees. That's included. So it would be D then? Yes, it is. That's correct. It is D. Okay, so again, um, to begin processing your payroll, okay, you don't write a check. That's a big no-no. Okay, because if you write a check, you still have a balance that you need to pay your employees or pay whoever. Second one, select the employee's uh, menu and then select pay schedule liabilities. Again, there is no option to pay scheduled liabilities. It's just pay liabilities. C is going to be select payroll uh, menu and then select process payroll. There is no process payroll, okay? So the way they highlight this one, so this one they kind of give you an, an advantage to here to kind of like make sure that you recognize uh, what the terminology is. We don't have the word scheduled and we don't have the word process payroll. It's just, it's just payroll center or it's just pay your employees, pay your pay, pay your liabilities or um, file your um, forms. Okay. So yay. And that is it for chapter 11, okay? Any questions as far as um, understanding how to process the payroll, okay?